<clears throat> we have had turkeys out there too in the east field morning and afternoon now. I haven't seen turkeys in a long time. Oh, wow. So to answer your question, yes, I will be there. If you'd like to join, that'd be super duper. All right. I would love to. There's a big oil drilling pipe that goes across the road. So they've thrown dirt over it, but it precludes the cows right now from being out in the pasture. So that keeps the West field open now. So cool. I like those cows though. They're cute. Yeah. Hasn't been a lot of activity going on out there yet. The corn's finally out. So I'm going to go out this morning and change the SD cards. What time are you head, heading out there? I'm totally flexible. Nine, nine thirty, ten o'clock. Okay. I could join you. If you want some. That would be fabulous. What All works right. for you? Nine? Uh maybe a, a little bit later just because I have some work that I need to get done. Maybe okay. ten. Okay. My house at ten. I'll be there. Well super. Daniel? What? You wanna Toodle along with us. Oh, that does sound fun. However, I've got company coming over today. Got my brother-in-law okay. and his boy and his mom. Wow, very good. And I told them, well, he's basically free all day, except for the babysitting part. My sister's going up with her youngest to do something elsewhere. He's like, want to come hang out? I'm like, sure. Do you want to come hang out here? Yeah, maybe. So, well, very good. Enjoy family. Yeah. We went down to a wedding in downtown Denver, 6th Avenue and Santa Fe. I don't know how people can handle driving in downtown Denver. I just don't understand. Took us two hours and 40 minutes to get there. Oh, that is a long drive. No, it's 57 miles. It's just <laughs> a lot of cars. That was last night? That was, or no, Thursday. Okay. Well, we still. We here at like 2.15, 2.30 in the afternoon for a 5 o'clock wedding. It's nuts. Next time they do it, tell them live stream it. <laughs> well, Deanne did their premarital counseling, and it was okay. a real blessing to be invited to the wedding. Yep. Yep. It's awesome. Well, let's see here. Speaking of that, I, I live streamed my daughter's wedding. We had it, we hosted it here. And um, there were some family members. We, you know, we couldn't host a lot of people because, you know, our house isn't huge. And so we, we, um, we could only ha have about 30 people. And so the rest of the family, we live streamed it so they could attend remotely. 27 or 24. All right. Well, you guys ready to get started? Yeah. Get this party started. Um, maybe let's wait just a couple more minutes. See if Sean, Sean makes it. Um, but we will be reading. It appears Acts twenty four verses twenty two through twenty seven. Must be raining at Sean's house. <laughs> no, it's you. not on the patio. Ooh, look at it. It's got it's the got, coat on. Got the coat on. There we go. Yep. It's a little chillier this morning. 
Yeah, the weather forecast for tomorrow is in the upper 30s here. Wow. Good, good morning. Glad you got up. Good morning. I didn't yesterday. I I slept until 10 minutes to 7 yesterday. It's kind of unusual. Kind of hard with the new puppy. You bet. She, she wants to get up and play. It's going to be fun. it's going to be fun when it's February for you, Sean Senior. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hopefully she learns to stay in her kennel a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Dylan. Mm. Good, morning. <laughs> Good morning, young Sean. Your head's on backwards. It is. <laughs> morning. And the rest of his body. <laughs> <laughs> I think my shirt's on backwards too. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. So you should hey. have quit while you were ahead. So good. Stop. No. Hey guys, um, just one thing I read this morning. There's a prayer. Um, a prayer group. Uh, Rez has a prayer group, um, and, they, and, and they posted. I think they posted it on Tuesday or Wednesday. But you, you remember the guy? Was it on a Wednesday night? It was on a. It was on a uh, second Wednesday. So if you had come to the second Wednesday service last week, there was. Um, they basically did testimonies in worship, and and one of the guys gave his testimony um god had killed healed, healed him from cancer like really it's like stage four cancer and um and after that wednesday service on tuesday he got into a really really bad motorcycle accident Ooh. um it was it was like bad enough that it was a flight for life uh situation so um they posted a thing to the to the prayer group thread to pray for him. So if you feel led, you know, his name is Jim, um, Jim Cobbett. But it's crazy that he had shared his testimony on Wednesday night and then on Tuesday had a really terrible motorcycle accident and almost died. I don't know if he's still alive or not, but it was like pretty bad. So, wow. Yeah. Anyway, okay. I want to let you know. Hand it over to you, Sean Jr. Yeah. Got where we're at. Um, <clears throat> X. 24, 22. X 24, 22. We'll just finish 24. Yep. All right. Um, I will pray and then we can get started. Um, Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another morning um, that we can come together and, and spend time in your word and getting to know you more. Um, I ask that you speak to us this morning and um, we would hear your voice and, and have discernment um, through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Um, all right, so let's do uh, since we're getting a late start, let's just do two readings. So I'll do one. Anybody want to take the second? I'd be happy to. Okay. Thank you, Dan. All right. Then Felix, who is well acquainted with the way adjourned the proceedings. When Lysias, the commander, comes, 
he said. I will decide your case. He ordered the centurion to keep Paul under guard, but to give him some freedom and permit his friends to take care of his needs. Several days later, Felix <laughs> came with his wife, Drusilla, who was a Jewess. He sent for Paul and listened to him as he spoke about faith in Christ Jesus. As Paul discoursed on righteousness, self-control, and the judgment to come, Felix was afraid and said, That's enough for now. Or, you, Yeah, you may leave. When I find it convenient, I will send for you. At the same time, he was hoping that Paul would offer him a bribe, so he sent for him frequently and talked with him. When two years had passed, Felix was succeeded by Orsius Festus, but because Felix wanted to grant a favor to the Jews, he left Paul in prison. But Felix, having a more exact knowledge of the way, put them off, saying, when Lysias, the commander, comes down, I will decide your case. And he gave orders to the centurion to keep him in custody and yet have some freedom and not to prevent any of his friends from ministering to him. But some days later, Felix arrived with Drusilla, his wife, who was a Jewess, and sent for Paul and heard him speak about the faith in Jesus Christ. And as he was discussing righteousness, self-control, and judgment to come, Felix became frightened and said, go away from the present, excuse me, go away for the present, and when I find time, I'll summon you. At the same time, he was hoping that money would be given in by Paul. Therefore, he used to send for him quite often and converse with him. But after two years had passed, Felix was succeeded by Porcius Festus, and wishing to do the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul in prison. So he was it was almost like he was on house arrest. They put him on house arrest because they gave him some some amount of freedoms. Um but then it was like he he was there still for a year and then Two years had passed, and they were just like, and then Felix wanting to appease the Jews, or probably was in debt to the Jews, left him there in prison after his his reign or his his duties were done, or he was just deposed very suddenly and had no chance to do anything. Uh -huh. Well, it's interesting that Felix appears to have head knowledge of the way, but not heart knowledge of the way. So he understood it and continued to call Paul in to, to tell him more, but the Lord didn't move in his heart for some reason. So, the, so that, so the very first verse confuses me. It's weird to me because it, my, my version, it says, then Felix who <clears throat> understood the facts concerning the way more accurately. adjourned their he hearing saying, and Lysias, the commanding officer, comes down, I will decide your case. I, I think I just understood what that means. I didn't understand the the beginning or the middle of that. It said, who understood the facts concerning the way more accurately. I think what it's referring to is just the previous statements. 
that Paul, you know, has just told him. Is that I think that's what it's referring to. Okay. But it's basically saying that then Felix, now that he understands a little bit more, um, decided to adjourn the hearing and wait for the commanding officer to, to decide the case. Got it. Uh, mine, mine has a little bit different language. It says, uh, Felix, having a rather accurate knowledge of the way, put them off. So uh, mine okay. says he already had, had the, and then in the, and then a footnote, it says, Felix was already familiar with the rudiments of Christian teaching, possibly from the preaching of Philip the Evangelist in Caesarea. So then, okay, so yeah, your your translation is, is a little more like how I was interpreting it when I read this the first time. So that, that brings up the question then, what about his knowledge of the way motivated him to wait for the commanding officer. I thought that was weird. You know what I mean? To decide the case. Like, it seems like if he already had the knowledge about the way, then what? Why does he want to wait for the commanding officer to come down? Well, part of it says he's hoping for a bribe. Yeah. Okay. So maybe he's just, uh, what's the word? Um, not procrastinating, but procrastinating. Yeah. Intentionally to hope that he, he can get money out of Paul, which actually is surprising too, because I kind of picture Paul as this guy who doesn't have much money. <laughs> he has a lot. He is, he's filled with God's Holy spirit and power. Right. And is doing amazing things, but he's like, but it kind of makes me think that actually Paul's like flush you know what I mean? Like he has access to a lot yeah. of funds, I, I assume, based on the church and the giving. When he was pleading his case before Felix, he says, I've, he says I was in the temple with alms and offerings for the poor. Uh, uh, it says, says in my footnotes that this is the only reference in Acts to the collection of money that Paul had taken up among the Gentiles or among the Gentile churches to assist the poor in Jerusalem. Interesting. It's the only time in the entire book where it refers to his funds. How funny. Because I know it does talk, Paul does reference collections and giving in the other, in his letters, his epistles. Um, hmm. But that's, that's really interesting that that's the only reference in the book of Acts. It's actually right right before our reading today. Uh, you know, here's a here's another thought too that everybody in town knew that Felix would take bribes, and it's also interesting that they didn't apparently they didn't approach Paul and say, "Hey, how about if we all pitch in and pay off Felix and get you out of there?" Right, but uh -huh. they didn't. Yeah, they could have. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, and maybe Paul said, no, I'm going to minister to Felix. I don't know. Well, paying a bribe, I wonder if that was, is, is, is that a sin? Is it a sin to pay a bribe, according to the Bible? I do not know. I feel like it is. But that doesn't it feels like it would is. be, right? Yeah. It's like there's there's something just basically de deceiving and dirty about it. I'm sure. Manipulative. Oh. Yeah. Proverbs has something to say. Uh, Exodus has something to say, too. It's It's talking against the people asking for a bribe. Um, uh, the king establishes the land by justice, but he who receives a bribe overthrows it. And so that speaks to corruption on right. receiving bribes. For a bribe blinds the discerning and perverts the words of the righteous. 
commandments in Exodus. Deuteronomy says you shall not pervert justice, you shall not show partiality, nor take a bribe, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the righteous. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty clear. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is against God's law. So it makes sense that Paul would have not done it. But certainly, I'm sure they were tempted. <laughs> You know what I mean? I mean, he sat he sat in prison for what two years, At just least. stuck there. Yeah. yeah. Now, granted, it was house arrest. Mm -hmm. You know, so his room and board was covered. Yeah, but he couldn't leave. Like this. And people were able to visit him and minister to him. <clears throat> Something that no, go ahead. I'm I'm about to change subjects, so I was just yeah, I'll just kind of put a cap on that idea. Um, like I think regardless, it would have been a temptation to give uh, Felix money, and I'm thinking it would have required faith to not do it. Right. Yeah, I have a reference to um, Deuteronomy sixteen nineteen. That says you must never twist justice or show partiality, never accept a bribe, for the bribes blind the eyes of the wise and the corrupt decisions of the godly. What's Deuteronomy what? What was that? Uh, 1619. 1619. Ooh, I don't know why that just gave me chills. Maybe it's cold in my room. Okay. <laughs> well, not to... Not to change gears if other people have more on the bribe portion, but Go for it. it's something that st stood out to me was why, you know, I, I want to know more about what Paul was basically, you know, giving a sermon to, to Felix and his wife you know, on, on righteousness, self-control, and judgment to come. So, like, I want to know how how he was presenting all of that that made Felix afraid. No. No, Biden. And, and he, he basically was like, oh, that's enough, you know. You can, you can go back to your cell or whatever, um, but like, was this, was this Paul, like speaking, speaking the truth, you know, was he still doing it in a loving, I mean, knowing Paul, he was, he was just, you know, pretty, pretty blunt about it, but speaking on, you know, righteousness, self-control. And the judgment to come. I guess this kind of plays into the bribe of like, you know, maybe he was speaking on, you know, it's it's wrong and it it distorts mm. your view of of uh, you know, righteous, righteousness, self control, and then he warned him of like God's judgment <laughs> and it scared him, scared Felix. But it's also interesting that Felix continued to have him come back and talk. Right. Yeah. In the footnotes in my Bible, too, it says Paul's talk with Felix became so personal that he grew frightened. Felix, like Herod Antipas, had taken another man's wife. Paul's words were interesting until they focused on righteousness and self-control in the coming day of judgment. Many people will be glad to discuss the good news with you as long as it doesn't touch their lives too personally. When it does, some will resist or run. So I think you're right, Sean. I think he, he's more than willing to discuss things, but when it comes down to personal, he knows he knows he's 
unrighteous and is not willing to submit to Jesus or the way so that his righteousness will be in Christ. And I mean, it's hard, it's, it's hard to admit, but I think I've been, been there, you know, in Felix's shoes of like when I hear, hear a hard truth and it becomes personal, it's like, Oh, okay. Let's, let's not talk about this anymore and kind of run from it. And it takes me some time, but then, you know, I wonder what, what happened to Felix after that, you know, cause he just, he just left and left Paul in prison. I wonder if there's any mention of Felix later, what happened to him or if he just kept running from the truth. It says the end of his rule, this is chat GPT, uh, challenges during his rule. Well, first of all, like his relationship with Drusilla, it says Drusilla was the daughter of King Agrippa the first. I think you said that, Sean. Mm -hmm. um, and belonged to the Herodian dynasty. Um, and their union was somewhat scandalous. Um, according mm -hmm. to Josephus, Felix became infatuated with Drusilla and was already married to King as as is as is Zeus of Amisa. Using a mediator, Felix persuaded Drusilla to leave her husband and marry him, and this made her his his third wife. And it says that Felix faced various challenges during his tenure. There were uprisings led by Jewish zealots and false prophets prophets. Um and he dealt severely with these threats using brutal force. And the end of Felix's tenure as procurator was marked by increased tension and violent confrontations with the Jewish population. The situation got so dire that Nero recalled him to Rome. However, before leaving, Felix attempted to quell the unrest by using force, which, which exacerbated tensions even further. Felix sounds like just an all around nice guy. <laughs> He was struggling so that yeah there were probably a lot of reasons that he was convicted by what paul was talking about i mean adultery murder corruption uh yeah he would have been like oh man if this is real i'm screwed But yet he continued to have Paul come back and talk to him, which is interesting. Even even if it was for ill motives, you know, there had to have been some kind of, you know, his his heart was just looking for, for a bribe. But he was still hearing what Paul was talking about still searching uh, yeah and and when it says his jewish wife wanted to hear it hear it as well kind of made the introductions drusilla uh, actually yeah. it doesn't say that it just says he brought drusilla along because, hey, she's Jewish. Maybe you two can get along. And then he just starts preaching to him. Yeah, his motive could have been that as far, part, of the, part of the bribery thing. Like, oh, my wife is Jewish, so maybe you'll be more inclined to, to give to me since she's one of your people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Hmm. Something like that. Or give to us. I have an unrelated question. 
that's more historical than anything. But so Felix was basically the governor mm-hmm. of this province, so it's of, the, of this Roman uh, province. We know Paul is a Roman citizen. He's Jewish. How many? I still in my mind think of Jewish, like the Jews and the and the Romans as kind of separate things. Hmm. But it's, there seems to be some overlap here. The Jews being Roman citizens, but at the same time the Jews are persecuted by the Romans, like in Jerusalem, <clears throat> in many places, I guess. But I'm wondering to what extent that overlap was and. Hmm. Are we just talking about very? Uh, 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 high, high class people. Like are, are the vast majority of Jews not Roman citizens? So it's kind of. I don't know if you guys know the answer to that. I'm gonna do some research. Mm. Yeah, <clears throat> I do not. I do know it's the same. He he. This Felix guy, as is Festus, they both they both um, held the same position as Pontius Pilate in Judea. Like hmm. Pilate is deposed, Felix takes over. Felix is deposed or dies, Festus takes over. Same exact office, in the same exact region. So. If you think about well, him I didn't, as like, didn't know that. if you think about him as Pontius Pilate 2.0, <laughs> that might put it in a little bit into perspective. And I would think that the priority is first you're a Roman, and then whatever else, Jewish, Gentile, Greek, whatever you know, and and working down. But but first you're a Roman and. And that's probably the only reason that Paul got treated like he was is among all the other things, he was a Roman. Well, there is also the point that he's talking to another guy, like a chapter or two earlier, and the guy says, I had to pay for my citizenship. You were born into it. That's pretty awesome. So yeah, I was the commander. So I wonder if yes, Rome rules over Israel, but not all Jews are Roman at that point. If you want to be Roman, you got to pay up. Like buy your citizenship mm. like everybody else that we've taken over. You're just the local population of this land we now own. And do they give them an ID card that says presto for 2,500 bucks, you're a Roman? You know, term expires in four years. <laughs> Said that you could, um, Jews, so, you know, Jewish people, they were, it was like a, a religious cultural group, right? And then Roman citizenship was a civic political mm-hmm. right, affiliation. And so, hmm. Venn, you know, Venn diagram sort of thing. You could have them overlap, right? Yeah. And Paul right. was in, Paul was one of the people who were in the overlap. Um, it, it says it ChatGPT um, says that most Jewish people at the time were not Roman citizens. Um, so Paul was kind of unique in that way. But you could gain, you could acquire um, Roman citizenship. Through various means, one of which would, was inheritance, and and this is how Paul acquired his citizenship. He was born a Roman citizen through his parents. I guess um, um, you could also acquire it as a reward or by purchase. Yeah, because the Romans okay. were the conquerors. Yeah. They were the what, occupying force, I guess, yep. in the area. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, but like, it also says that in the Roman Empire, Jews made up about ten percent of the population. 
across okay. the entire Roman Empire. So that's a pretty good chunk. Yeah, ten percent of the population overall, but only a small subset of, of Jewish people were actually had Roman citizenship. Hmm. And I can imagine them being like the the upper crust of society, probably. Yeah, I think so. Their social status. It often says hmm. social status. Roman citizenship often correlated with a higher social status because of the privileges it conferred. Um, however, it does not mean that all Jews with Roman citizenship were of high social standing, nor does it mean that Jews without citizenship were of low status. So, um, but there was some correlation with, with higher social status. Because they had the sword. All right. Yeah. Daniel, do you know you have a skunk on your desk? Yeah, I do. Oh, okay. leave, it, leave it there. I'm about to take a picture. It's freaking me out. I just want to make sure you do. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here, kitty, kitty. Ow. Got it. No wild well, any any final thoughts or takeaways or applications? Oops. That's my question. What is the application here? What's God saying? How do we apply this to our lives? He's saying, if you guys want me to tell you dad jokes every day, you need to pay up. <laughs> <laughs> pay the joke machine. Well, something for me, like a takeaway for me, that was a surprise, but also gave me some Holy Spirit goosebumps, was hearing God's law around bribery. I didn't know that. I didn't know that was actually a sin called out in the Bible. I can see why, but but hearing that for the first time was like, it kind of hit me. There's a, I had a Holy Spirit moment and I heard that. I was like, whoa, it's enlightened. On, well, yeah, hearing, because that, I don't know, God's law surrounding like accepting a bribe and the repercussions of it. It's almost, you know, I'm trying to make the application of, of like her connection between offering a bribe to and and you know what what the motives are of offering a bribe and and how that affects you know both both parties either giving or receiving the bribe still affects their heart yeah. in the same way it's the corruption of one's integrity, awesome. right? It's like corruption versus justice. Those are the two like and things that are in, at odds. They were in Caesarea now. Is that yes? Correct? Yes. How far is Caesarea from Rome? It's Tel Aviv in Israel, Tel Aviv area. Because theoretically. After two years, you know the guards are going to slack off. Mm -hmm. Paul could have just walked away. Right. I mean, it's not like they could have put him on the internet to say, here's what he looks like. Mm. But he didn't. Right. <laughs> yeah, Paul has more patience, I think, than a whole heck of a lot of guys and that has to be God-centered for sure. Mm -hmm. 
Well, maybe he was renowned for, oh yeah, you were also the guy that was in that earthquake in that one prison with your friend and you still didn't escape. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one no, thought on the... I'm oh, sorry, Dan, go ahead. I'm just going to say it's been an interesting few verses. Well, one thought on the bribery question, Sean, that you had was... It was interesting. Like, what's this? What I was hearing you ask was like, what's the spiritual dynamic happening when someone gives a bribe to another person, right? Or offers a bribe, and that person makes the decision to either accept it or reject it. There's a spiritual dynamic, I think, at work. Um, and one of the things I was thinking about was like a bribe doesn't have to be um, uh, what's the word money it can be a lot of things right it can be a favor it could be a kind word um, and and like so it kind of comes back to also like Tertullus, the lawyer that we read a couple of days ago, I think he offered his adulation of Felix, mm -hmm. right? I think from a spiritual perspective was also a bribe, right? He's kind of, For sure. the, you know what I mean? Hmm. Um, it's a really good point. So I guess it's a warning for me to one, be wary of people that, you know, speak to me in that way and of be wary of, of the motive. Am I being bribed? Right. Um, and then to be, be careful about my words and how I speak to others. Am I trying to manipulate others by saying things to them that are kind and stroke their ego? I'm sure I've done it. Um, but it's all, it seems like it's all, com it comes from the same spirit that God's speaking to, I guess. This reminds me of something in Matthew that I read concerning swearing. It's, I think this is a sermon on the Mount. Hmm. And I think this ties into the bribery thing too. Cause Jesus essentially says, do not swear on which, which my uh, modern brain thought, oh, it's cussing. Right, Don't cuss. right. But it's, no, he's talking about swearing on like, oh, I swear to God, or I swear on my dead mother's grave, or I swear on mm -hmm. something. He says, don't do that because your word, your word is good in of itself because you said it. And swearing anything else is from the evil one is how mm -hmm. he puts it. So I think, I think the, the issue of bribes could fit pretty neatly into that, hmm. t into that teaching. Interesting. Yeah, it feels related. Mm -hmm. But and yeah, taking that that approach, like for me, and it's something that I kind of struggle with is like making promises or commitments that you know just to. I don't know, just to, a lot of this is probably work related and, and other things, but like making promises, like over promising, but not worrying about under delivering, you know? Hmm. So that's, it's almost like a bribe to be like, oh, you know, not, not necessarily to like keep you around or just like just to make somebody you know appease somebody or make them happy in the moment but then like i'll i'll worry about it later when it comes to delivering on that promise and i won't i won't you know hold to that just because i think you know the repercussions will be less or different or something if if I don't deliver on that promise, but like what 
what it was saying there in Matthew, even I kind of took in the way of like, Hey, if you commit to something, you know, have the integrity and make sure you, you know, keep your word. That's a great point. Like over promising can be bribery. It's like, and, and I know that feeling of, of over, over promising and I'm trying to like inspect my motive when I have done it before. I'm trying to win that person over. I'm trying to gain their trust or I'm trying to get them to like, yeah, basically win them over. So that's a bribe in a way. It's like I'm trying to give them something to... to, what to bribe them to? To manipulate them give something back to me, I guess. And even if it's just like in that moment, like the way I take it is like, you know, if my, if my boss at work or something is pestering me about something like, yeah, I'll do that or something like that. And then when push comes to shove and it's time to deliver on it, it's like, Oh, I didn't get to it. Sorry. And I kind of make that excuse. And it's like, at least I got, got my boss kind of off my back in that moment Uh. but I kind of in my heart or deep down I really was never going to do that thing or something yeah you're just placating him so he would go away Yeah. yeah well there's a there's a lesson in the bible about the dad telling the son go to the cornfield yes I'll go but he doesn't and right. tells the other son, go to the cornfield. And the guy says no, but ends up going. So oh, like, really? Yeah. I remember that. Along those same lines. What is that? So it's it's under-promising and over-delivering is what the second son did. Yep. Yes. <clears throat> I, lo- I love that. Okay, here it is. What do you think? There was a man who had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work today in the vineyard. I will not, he answered, but later he changed his mind and went. Then the father went to the second son and said the same thing. He answered, I will go, sir, but he didn't. Which of the two did the did what his father wanted? The first, they answered. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, The tax collectors and the prostitutes are entering the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to show you the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But the tax collectors and prostitutes did. And even after you saw this, you did not repent and believe him. uh, Where is that from? Matthew uh, 21, 28 through 32. Twenty-eight through thirty-two. This is awesome. This is really applicable. What did Mackenzie say? Did she say something about the Pharisees? That was that was my. You said oh, okay. <laughs> she was like Mackenzie. Who they're speaking to? Yeah, who is the audience? In the reading, Matthew reference. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, the dad. Oh, <laughs> I see what you're saying. Let me say, read full chapter. Jesus sent two disciples saying to them, Jesus at the temple. It says he's talking to the chief priests and the elders of the people. By what authority are you doing these things who gave you this authority? And he says, I will ask you one question. Was it John's baptism or was it of heaven? Or was it of heaven of human? 
they discussed it and said, we don't know. And then he said, I won't tell you then why I'm doing this. And then he immediately f says, what do you think? There was a man who had two sons and goes into the parable. So he's talking to the church staff. Yes. Yeah, because they're again trying to trap him with words and yeah, they can't. <laughs> Kind of interesting if you go back to the over promise under deliver that reflects on your character and your integrity whereas you under promise and over deliver i guess it still does reflect on your character but in a 180 degree different way you know at least in society it does today, I guess. And I think the latter can become a blessing to people from like from a perspective, you know, of them being blessed and then t turning to God. You know, you know what I mean by that? Yeah, people appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you for, and it, and it can be a blessing in that regard. Yeah. That speaks to my favorite Star Trek reference. When Kirk says, Scott, have you always multiplied all of your time estimates by a factor of four? And he's like, certainly, sir. That's how else would I maintain my reputation as a miracle worker? <laughs> That's funny. Daniel, you need to get a life. <laughs> oh, gosh. Going back to the son that said, no, I will not go to the um, vineyard, but then does. God still doesn't like that because our actions should match our words. You know, and like Sean was saying, you know, it's the intention of your heart. Mm -hmm. So he wants both the um, willingness to obey and the action of obeying. So he wants our heart involved in what we're doing as well. Yep. Good point. Yeah. If you're, if you're under promising because your motive is to manipulate whoever you're doing the work for that makes a lot of sense right that also is bad yeah totally so somewhere Everybody else just flows up. yeah somewhere else in the bible i don't remember where but you know just let your yes be a simple yes and your no be a no mm -hmm. sermon on that yeah. and yeah. that's hard because our pride I think, is not people I think that was the yeah. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Oh, I, was, I, was, I think that was, that was the swearing oath mm -hmm. yeah. in Matthew that yep. I just mentioned. That, right. uh, I guess that's that's how he qualifies it. Like, don't swear, just right. have your own yeah. integrity. Simple yeah. yes, simple no. Everything else yeah. comes from the evil one. So he, wow. <laughs> he, really, he really drives it home with that at the end. Yeah. <clears throat> I love that. So there's this kind of, there's this perfect alignment with our words and our actions and isn't that the heart of god i mean that's part of who he is he is completely faithful on everything he speaks and his promises to us so it makes sense that we should be the same right if we carry his heart his spirit <laughs> yeah so good. Ooh. Well, should we, should we close out on that? Sure. Um, would you mind praying, Damien? I would not. Lord, thank you. 
Mighty God, thank you so much that um, it is your your very nature, the core of your being. Um, you invented integrity. <laughs> um, your actions align completely with your words. And you, you call us through your spirit to act in the same way, Lord. Lord, give us the faith and transform our hearts and our minds to come into alignment, Lord, with your integrity that we also would speak the truth and let our yeses be yes and our noes be no and align our actions to, to our words, Lord. Thank you for this lesson today, this teaching. Thank you for speaking to us like you always do, Lord God. We love you, Lord. Strengthen our faith. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Do you realize that that just um, happened like the sons? Damien, will you pray? I will not. And then he prayed. Uh, do you mind praying? That's what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day, guys. All right. Have a good one. Thank you guys. All right. Love you. See ya. Bye. Love you. Bye. See ya.